For years, Elon Musk has been pitching a world filled with fully autonomous vehicles that get us from one place to another without any human interaction. To this day, Elon Musk and Tesla have been pushing forward full force and they have not been deterred whatsoever by the noise around them. However, the same cannot be said about the several companies that aspire to compete against Tesla in the robotaxi market. GM shut down their robotaxi program Maven last year. Uber sold off their robotaxi division to Aurora at the end of 2020 and Toyota, well, they never really entered the space in the first place. Even Apple is shifting their focus. Apple was originally all about developing luxury robotaxis, but more recent rumors suggest that Apple is now focused on building a personal vehicle instead. This isn't to say that these companies are giving up on autonomy itself by any means. Rather, they're just shifting away from robotaxis specifically. This pessimistic view is not only common among several companies, but also many countries. For instance, the former transport minister of Singapore stated, quote, We are not in a rush to be the first adopter. I look forward to a larger scale adoption of AV technology in Singapore, but I think this will not be in the near future. Meanwhile, India has straight up banned self-driving cars in order to protect jobs. On this channel, we always cover the optimistic future filled with self-driving cars and the people on Mars. So let's take a look at the other side. Why are so many companies pulling back on robotaxis? One of the biggest criticisms of setting up a robotaxi network is that most people don't want to rely on a ride-hailing service. Companies like Uber and Lyft have been extremely successful at generating large revenues and attracting large audiences, but this is still only a fraction of the automobile industry. We don't exactly know how many total miles are driven by rideshare on an annual basis, but we can estimate this based on the revenues of top rideshare services. Taking a look at Uber's historical revenue graph, their revenue peaked at $13.444 billion per year. The average cost of a ride-hail service per mile is $1.86, and considering that Uber takes a 30% cut of this revenue, they get approximately $0.55 cents per mile. Even if we assume that all of the revenue that Uber gets is from rideshare, this only comes out to a total of about 25 billion miles. In 2019, it was estimated that Uber controlled about 37.2% of the global ride-hailing market, meaning that the entire ride-hail market accounts for about 67 billion miles per year. That's no doubt a massive amount. But at the same time, it's basically nothing in comparison to the overall automotive industry. The Federal Highway Administration estimates that in 2018, drivers in just the US alone put in a mind-boggling 3.225 trillion miles. We don't have a statistic for global annual mileage, but I think we can safely assume that it's well over 10 trillion miles. That means that the global ride hail market only accounts for a mere 0.67% of the total global mileage, if that. With that being said, the average person clearly does not prefer using a ride hailing service over just owning their own car or using some other mode of transportation. Of course, one of the biggest barriers for traditional ride hailing services is the cost of the human driver. Without a human driver, the cost per mile would plummet. Using Tesla's revenue projections for their autonomous cars, the business journals estimates that Tesla will charge about 65 cents per mile. That's ironically just about a 65% reduction from what ride hail services are charging today. Over the long term, it is expected that Tesla may be able to get this cost down to as low as 25 cents per mile, but we likely won't be seeing anything lower than that. This has often been cited as a turning point for people giving up their cars and relying on robo taxis. But how much does this even save? Well, the average car costs between 35 cents and 65 cents per mile over the lifetime of the car. So until robotaxis start to cost less than 35 cents per mile, there won't be any financial incentive to not owning a car. It should be noted though that you won't have to deal with repairs or insurance or inspections or any of that. While you may save some hassle, you won't actually be saving any money until robotaxis are dirt cheap. Even if robotaxis end up costing just 25 cents per mile, I'm not sure if most people would switch. A dirt cheap car only costs 35 cents per mile, so you're only saving 10 cents per mile. Given that the average American drives 13,500 miles per year, this would save them approximately $1,350 per year or about $3.70 per day. Mathematically, the robotaxi would be the better choice. However, several studies actually suggest that people don't care. One survey of 1,200 US consumers found that 89% of consumers prefer to own their own car over ride sharing, and that actually makes perfect sense. Personally, I would never give up my car even though I don't use it 99% of the time. In my opinion, the convenience of having my own car is simply too high, and considering this statistic, I suspect that most of you guys feel the same way. The thing is, for the vast majority of us, 
owning a car isn't based on efficiency or effectiveness. Rather, it's based on convenience. In fact, the same survey found that 93.5% of people viewed car ownership as a convenience. Only 6.5% viewed it as a hassle or a chore. Considering this, it's very unlikely that we'll see a mass exodus from car ownership. Moreover, as robotaxis become cheaper, so will the cost of car ownership. Most people don't have an electric car yet, but once the purchase price of electric cars are comparable to gas counterparts, the cost of car ownership will just go down even more, making it even less desirable to give up car ownership. Many companies are starting to realize this and are subsequently giving up their pursuit of the robotaxi market. This isn't to say that Tesla and other companies who are still pursuing the market can't grow to millions of robotaxis or even tens of millions of robotaxis. But we likely won't be seeing hundreds of millions of robotaxis followed by a radical ditching of car ownership. Anyways, another major reason that companies are giving up on robotaxis is the length of development. The general consensus is that self-driving development has been chugging along quite smoothly. Most leading companies are already 80% done with self-driving development, but the last 20% is by far the hardest and the longest. As the 80-20 rule states, 80% of results can be accounted for by just 20% of the work. Meanwhile, the last 20% of results requires the remaining 80% of work. So, though it may seem like we're really close to completing self-driving development, there's actually quite a bit of development left. A Forbes article suggests that the first 80% is a result of 40 years of technological development and advancement. So, the last 20% will also take 40 years, meaning that we won't see fully autonomous cars till 2060. I'm not quite sure it will take that long, but it is true that full autonomy is deceptively close. Something else to consider is that shifting robotaxis will require significantly more regulatory approval as well as legal responsibility. As long as there's a steering wheel and a person sitting behind it, even if a car is 100% autonomous, automakers can transfer the responsibility to the driver. This way, they won't have to worry about crashes or insurance or any of that. And that brings me on to the next major reason that many companies are giving up on robotaxi development, which is that for many companies, it simply makes more sense to just license the technology if it does turn out to be a massive market. Robotaxi development is not cheap by any means. It costs billions upon billions of dollars. In the past, Tesla has gone extremely close to bankruptcy, and though that was due to a production issue, they likely would have a lot more wiggle room if they weren't spending so heavily on autonomy research and development. Fortunately, it worked out for Tesla, but this is not a journey that any company really wants to go through. Uber, for instance, is already losing $6-7 to $7 billion per year, and this was the case even before the pandemic. Considering this, it makes little sense to lose billions more in the hope of developing robotaxis. If Tesla or some other company does end up developing fully autonomous cars, Uber can likely just license the technology from these companies they would be giving up a portion of their profit margin. But that's way better than having the company go bankrupt trying to develop robotaxis. As for Toyota, there's some rumors that Tesla and Toyota may be partnering on an upcoming SUV. Toyota would of course manufacture the SUV and Tesla would provide the self-driving technology to be put in the car. However, this rumor is quite weak and has little evidence to back the claim. Nonetheless, this may very well be what Toyota ends up doing considering that they haven't really worked on robotaxis too much. Something else to consider is that Toyota and General Motors are established automakers. They're good at making cars and selling them for a profit. They've never tried a company-owned taxi model and it's not clear if they would actually be successful in this realm. Meanwhile, Elon Musk is ecstatic to give this new industry a try and potentially even stop selling consumer cars if things work out. So, from the perspective of these legacy automakers, it may be a case of them letting Tesla take the robotaxi market. That way, legacy automakers won't have to compete against Tesla in the consumer car market and they can stick to what they're good at, producing and selling cars. At the end of the day, some companies have shifted their focus away from the robotaxi market, and others have completely exited the autonomy scene itself. This may seem counterintuitive as Tesla is still pushing really hard for fully autonomous robotaxis. However, this actually does make sense from the perspective of these companies. The truth is, just because robotaxis are cheaper doesn't mean that people will completely ditch car ownership by any means. And, given the financial state of some of these companies, it simply doesn't make sense to take the risk. For more established companies, it simply makes more sense to focus on what they're already good at. So, why mess up what you've already got by entering a brand new industry? Do you guys think that backing off from robotaxis was the right choice? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys appreciate seeing the perspective of the other side. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, 
and I'll see you guys on the next one.